When did smartphones get so big? It's pretty standard now for a smartphone to come with a display upwards of six and a half inches diagonally. But when did we decide that this was a good optimal size for our little pocket computers? Let's talk about that. Hey guys, I'm Ryan Thomas, and I don't know about you, but I hear from a lot of people complaining that phones these days are just way too big. A lot more than I hear about phones being the right size or a bit small. And it's a fair comment to make because the devices that we carry around with us every single day are simply huge, but they also pack in more stuff now than they ever really have done. Take the OnePlus 13 for instance. Sure, it is bigger in every single metric compared to the now seven year old OnePlus 6, but it also now has a way bigger display with smaller bezels, a far more complex camera system, a battery that's almost double the capacity and comes with more RAM and storage to go along with a processor, an order of magnitude faster. The OnePlus 13 is a supremely capable smartphone, perhaps one of the best that you can buy right now, but it's also huge and that automatically rules it out for a select few people. The Pixel 9 and 9 Pro, similar to the base model S25 and the iPhone 16 and 16 Pro, sit in what has now become the base level, the entry level form factor, the default if you will. And in fairness, these phones, which are now the ones that most people will be buying, are appreciably smaller than the likes of the OnePlus 13, the Pixel 9 Pro XL, the Galaxy S25 Ultra, the 16 Pro Max. And they also pack in a lot of what makes those bigger flagships so great. The only real compromises you tend to get these days are with the smaller display and the battery. I happen to think that the Pixel 9 Pro is maybe the nicest feeling phone in the hand this year. And a lot of that has to do with its footprint. This year, it also doesn't really offer anything less than the bigger model, which is great for us small phone enthusiasts. The Xiaomi 15 is something that I've also been toying around with recently. It's in a very similar boat in terms of feeling in the hand, a really nice balance, but it's not all about footprint here. Here are two more compact devices from years gone by, the Pixel 5 and the Galaxy S10e, arguably just the right form factor for an Android smartphone. A considerable amount smaller once again, though due to their age, their bezels are pretty big and don't make as good use of space as the newer phones, but their displays are still very usable and offer a nice big canvas for doing all manner of things from doom scrolling to playing games, though I'm really not sure you'd get much battery life from these particular models, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. It's not just diagonal screen size or phone size that really tells the whole story here though. Incidentally, these are 5.8 and 6 inch screen sizes, but it's what comes with that. These phones are also appreciably more slender and less bulky in the Z axis. And at 150 grams instead of the 210 of the OnePlus 13 that I mentioned earlier, they're over 25% lighter, which makes a real world difference to the feeling in the hand but also stuff like how much pocket space it takes up, how bulky they are, how easy they are to drop. Look, for a good few years, a decade even, there were so many disadvantages to a smaller phone. A less efficient compute meant that battery life was really quite a big problem. The batteries themselves took up more space. LCD backlit displays also require more space compared to the incredibly thin OLED panels we have now, which also can reach further into the corners thanks to our advancements in display manufacturing. Now would be like the perfect time to build a compact smartphone because with silicon carbide batteries allowing denser capacity, super efficient compute requiring less space for cooling assemblies and the general efficiencies that we built on in the last well, half decade, there's less downside now than there ever really has been as well. But the thing is, as loud as the noise gets for compact smartphones being better, and mind you, I am one of those voices, I absolutely love a compact flagship, no one actually seems to buy them. A prime example would be the iPhone 5S and the SE crowd, who absolutely hated the larger form factors of the iPhone 6 and more so the 6 Plus style. So Apple decided to cater them with an iPhone 12 mini and 13 mini. These things had the same top of the line processor as the bigger smartphones, had the flagship camera experience as well in that chassis that almost felt perfect. It was fantastic to feel in the hand. And honestly, it didn't do too bad on a battery either, given their time of development and how small the batteries really had to be. 
They were almost the ultimate small smartphone and yet they didn't perform well enough in sales for Apple to really continue on. So us small phone lovers would have to resort to going and buy a second hand 13 mini on eBay just to satisfy our tiny flagship itch. And people not buying small phones isn't exactly a shock. Uh, people spend far more time now on their phones than they have done before. And I know people who don't even own a computer or a laptop even, all they have is their phone. Imagine a device as small as a Pixel 5 being your only real computer. And with social media, short form video in particular, as popular as ever, it makes sense that people want their one and only computer to have a big display with big batteries that can display as many silly TikToks as they want over and over, but also give you enough screen real estate to make a big screen purchase. You know, the kind of ones that we tend to get the laptop out for, or people that don't have a laptop need to use their phone for that kind of thing. This isn't to say that small phones should be completely off the menu. I actually think that with how their product line is at the moment and the hype that seems to be around the company, nothing would absolutely kill the market if it created a 5.7 or 5.8 inch nothing phone mini. Genuinely, I think that would absolutely bang. And um, well, they can send me my 1% royalties in the mail for that idea. Look, I think where we find ourselves now with the base model big three is actually not too bad. I will die on the hill that squared off sides have no place in big phones and that smooth tapers of phones gone by really helps them feel more slender, even if they weren't all that small. The ability to fit three big cameras into a phone these days, especially with the larger sensors that myself have been asking for, clearly has spurred on this change for bigger, chunkier devices, particularly in the depth of the Z axis. And as a result, we've been able to fit larger batteries because we've had to make the phones thicker to start with. It would be really cool if in a couple of years time, we got to see a Pixel 11 mini or Galaxy S27 mini, something that kept the high end processor, 120 Hertz refresh rate, and most of the cameras, maybe even just that main big sensor, but was able to be as small as something like a Galaxy S10e in footprint, even if it did have to be a little bit thicker. But given trends and what people are actually buying, I'm not sure we'll ever see that happen. Smartphones became big because people bought the bigger models. And we're at a point now where most are happy with what they have. And it's the vocal minority searching for something that isn't currently available. Maybe we'll see a return to the niche once again. Go on nothing, give me that 1%. Let me know what you make of how big smartphones have become in the last few years in the comment section. Are you still holding on to a smaller model like an iPhone mini or an S10e? I know so many people who love the S10e. Or have you moved up to something that we see more of these days, Pixel 9 for example? I think they're honestly a pretty decent middle ground. I don't hate the size of those. I just wish that there was also a decent mini option. While you're down there in the comments section, be sure to hit like if you enjoyed today's content. And of course, subscribe to never miss another upload. Thank you all so much for watching. I've been Ryan Thomas and I will catch you later. Cheers.